Hi there, this is Groovy and G, and today we're looking at Renoise. Now, before I dive in and get more in depth into the features of this program, I thought it would be useful to do a list of my favorite hotkeys and kind of workflows. So before we even get started, you've got a kind of optimal way that you can start to try and use the program. This is especially useful if you're a beginner because one of the best things about Renoise is that the more you use it, the more you use your keyboard and the less you're clicking around with your mouse. And it's a very keyboard kind of shortcut intensive program. You can, you can get so fast with it using some of these kind of tricks and, and hotkeys to get around the place. So I'm going to split this video up into a couple of parts and we're going to start with some basic navigation. Right, so we're in a blank project here now. The first shortcut which I use all the time is command and comma. Now this actually brings up the shortcut menu. So it's a very useful one to have and you click on keys and then you can search in here. Say I want to search nudge and I can then see what hotkeys I've assigned to it or if there isn't any hotkeys assigned, I can assign them in this preferences window. So that's very useful. You can obviously do all your audio settings and MIDI and all kinds of other stuff. But I just wanted to show you that command and comma brings up the preferences and then you can look at your hotkeys from there. Okay, on as we go. You see these eight buttons up here. These are kind of like snapshot windows if any of you use Logic, but they basically store a state that Renoise is in, a window state. So I can show you F1 is, is edit by default, F2 is mix, F3 is sampler, and then F4 goes to key zones in the sampler and F5 goes to modulation. F6 goes to effects and then F7 is plugin, F8 is MIDI and that's it. So I'm now doing F1 and F2. If I wanted F2 to say B go to MIDI, what I can do, if I just turn this mouse on actually, if I go, I'm now on number two. If I right click on number two, whilst I've got this MIDI window selected. Now pressing F1 goes to edit, but F2 goes to MIDI. And then to set it back, I would click on this window and right click on the two. So now F2 is going back to mix as, as it is. I've generally just left these as what they are. I really just use F1, 2 and 3 to skip through these main panels is what I use all the time. So they're very useful for you to get started. So let's jump into the pattern window quickly and you can use your mouse to get around and and holding shift will select regions and you can click around you can also hold shift and then use your arrow keys to select portions of the the window if you're just grabbing a chunk sometimes it is quicker just use the mouse and keyboard but there's lots of places where using the hotkeys is much much quicker and we'll get into them in a second you can press tab to move along your tracks one by one and then you press shift tab to go back. So tab and shift tab to go across your tracks. If you've got these extra note columns, it'll actually tab each of the individual note columns before you jump to the next track. So you want to keep that in mind. A couple more useful ones. Yeah, I will just say that a lot of these hotkeys involve the numpad on the keyboard so if you, you're on a laptop and you haven't got a big keyboard I would actually suggest getting one for this program because they do make a big difference but one of the sets here is using your the home end page up and page down so end takes you to the bottom page up takes you a quarter of the page up at a time and page down takes you a quarter of a page down and then home takes you to the top so between these four you can scoot around the page very quickly and they, they really help when you're trying to just jump to the bottom or the top. Okay, so for the next hotkey, there's this option here, which is follow the player position. Now I've got mine set to the full stop on the numpad. I'm not sure what it is by default, but that's just what I've got here. But you definitely want to learn this one because you'll be using this the whole time. When you're recording in live, you need to have this enabled. Otherwise, you're just recording on one step you can alt click in any of these windows to set them to be your focus so you can't you can't do this but you can if i open this one you can select this one i don't know if you can select this yeah you can so you can select these two as well 
And so what this will mean is simple hotkeys on your Mac, like the up and down arrows. When this window is selected, the up and down is moving in here. But if I've got this window as my main selection, up and down is moving in here. So there's lots of basic key functions which will only work if you've got the focus in the right place. Stuff like Command R for renaming is a big one that I use a lot as well which will only work if you've got the focus in the right place and then I think you can you can alt tab to shuffle through the focus to the next window but that's a you know I don't know if you need to remember that one I, I don't use it that often I'm much more likely to click around but it's there for you if you need it well thanks for listening and look out for part two coming soon